Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org, and on this episode of HeadFi TV, we have a special guest. We have Owen Kwan from Inviction. Now, Owen was previously with Astle & Current for, for eight years, um, and he started his own company, Inviction, and you're now the exclusive North American distributors of Astle & Current. Nice to have you, Owen. Thanks for having me, Jude. Yeah, I'm used to talking to you now for the last eight years about Astle & Current products. That's what we're going to do today, uh, because today Astle & Current is launching a new player called the SE200. Um, and I'm very excited about this one. The top panel kind of gives a hint as to some different things going on inside, and I'm going to let you introduce um, the, the SE200. Thanks. So uh, we're very excited about uh, this new launch of uh, the model, as always. The SE200 is the second model from the Aston and Kern AN Flutra premium line of uh, digital audio players. Um, after the first version, SE100, uh, was introduced, we were once again thinking about the nature of the word uh, premium and uh, asked ourselves that what is the value that we can add to that premium experience of hi-fi audio. We decided that, uh, you know, we could just give it a try with uh, something that nobody has ever done yet. And the result is SE200. The Infotra SE200 is equipped with the word first multi DAC setup. It has dual DAC setup of ESS 9068 and a single DAC setup of AK4499 EQ. Now, both of the uh, two different companies DAC chip it has its own independent amplifier structure designed to complement each DAC's characteristic and the DAC filter to create your own sound. Yeah, the, the ES9068 is completely new to me. Uh, I was not even familiar that there was a 9068. I knew the 9038, the 9028, the 9018. Um, so I looked it up. It said that uh, the 9068 AS is the first low power saber deck with hardware MQA high res rendering? Uh, I think that's correct. Correct. And then that um, is correct. and you and you guys are using that 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 uh, the hard the hardware MQA rendering uh, from it. That is correct. So now okay. the listeners can uh, take the full advantage of uh, MQA treated music files as is. Okay. And is that also true of the AKM side? That is correct. All right, so now I do want to make sure that we're clear on what makes this very different from other players where you might be able to swap out modules to change the DACs and the amps. This is essentially two entirely different players sharing controls, sharing a screen, sharing a chassis. But really, it's two entirely different players inside because each amp DAC is separate from the other amp DAC completely, which is why you have two sets of uh, single-ended and two sets of balanced outputs. I have this correct, right? That is correct. Uh, you put it really nicely uh, about the character of this SE200 device. It appears to be as a single player, but you can enjoy both of the worlds of uh, AKM and then the ESS uh, DAC chips at a different characteristic so that it maintains the tonality of Aston and Kern, which is more natural and neutral sound. But you can also enjoy two different characteristics for listening to your favorite tunes or different genre of the music. Yeah, you know, I've spent a few days with it, and I found myself gravitating more maybe toward the AKM side. And then maybe that was just because I also wanted to compare it to your AKM equipped, but it has dual AKM 4499 EQs, the SP2000, your flagship. And so maybe I've gravitated more toward that. I'll say more about kind of my first sound impressions uh, once we're kind of done talking about some of the features of the SE200. I do find its dual amp, dual DAC setup to be very cool. Uh, with Astel and Kern, for those of you not familiar with their history, in my opinion, and uh, I, I have a feeling anybody in the industry would agree, um, you guys kind of made the industry what it is today in terms of the portable player market. You've defined what players, what we expect from players, the features, the form factor, the controls, starting with your AK-100-120 many, many years ago, it feels like now. 
Um, and I think uh, you've been trendsetters, and I think that's a fair thing to say. And if this does well, which I would be very surprised if it didn't, um, you probably will have another trend. I don't think we'll, this will be the first player that we'll see that has a multi-DAC, multi-amp setup within a single chassis without having to change modules, but we'll see. I have a feeling this isn't going to be the first we see. But can you tell us about some of the other things, like battery life, price, availability, um, and some of the cool things about the chassis as well? Sure. Um, so the SE200 uh, is now uh, equipped with the two different companies' DAC chips. And because of the four different audio outputs, uh, there are four different independent amplifier section has been built in so that each different channel, two balanced and the two single-ended, does not interfere at all. And it just gives you the list of the coloration or distortion, but the music that you wanted to listen to. The other feature of uh, the device is that it's design and then the LED indicators. We put the best of the manufacturing capacity that we found and then put it to the work. So I don't know whether you can see it from this angle, but you can see it from the, the angle of the device with the beautiful curve on the volume side, uh, which took a lot more of effort for our team to manufacture. But uh, it's uh, just uh, created the beautiful uh, aspect of the player. And then for the LED content, um, LED light is on the side uh, that changes based on uh, the track information or the music files that you're listening to or the volume controls, uh, how strong or the weak the volumes are and the more information of which deck you're using or you're listening to right now. So aside of uh, these factors, uh, this uh, SE200 uh, runs the, the battery of the SE200 uh, lasts about 14 hours. And of course, it can be changed uh, based on how you listen to your music by streaming or the Wi-Fi's or how uh, complicated the music files uh, you're listening to. But then, now that technology and the battery management is now sealed onto this player with using the ceramic uh, rear glass panel on the back and the top too, so that it is more scratch resistant. Yeah, that's very cool. looks cool too. So the battery life at 14 hours is a big deal. Um, we're going to talk more about battery life when we get to your other player that we'll be talking about shortly. Um, and the one thing I'll say about the SE200 is it is, uh, it's just one of those products that's what I call, I, I've said it before in other videos, uh, the products that are the easiest audio stories to tell. The easiest stories to tell are the products that both measure well and sound, you know, that measure great and sound great. If you have both of those, then it's just such an easy story to tell. And in this case, um, uh, we have that with the SE200. Um, it performs really in the flagship class of Astle and Kern's players, in my opinion, uh, both from a measured perspective and from how it sounds. Um, I've compared it to your flagship SP2000, again, listening mostly to the AKM side to compare to it. And I gotta tell you, it's, it's right there with it to my ears. I've been using in-ears like the Campfire Audio, um, Solaris 2020, the Sony IER M9, um, and the, uh, the QDC Anoli VX. These are kind of the three IEMs I've been using with this in the short time I've had it. And on the AKM side especially, and, 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 uh, and with the ESS side, it still sounds beautiful as well, but I've just been spending more time on the AKM side. It images beautifully, which is really kind of a hallmark of the SP2000's playback. I know I'm not alone in saying that. Um, and then the other thing is, is the, with, with all of the Astle and Kern players, that I've used maybe from the beginning, certainly of late, dead quiet with any IEM you plug into it, probably among the quietest in terms of measured levels. And so when you're looking at levels like a couple of microvolts at typical listening levels of noise, of self noise, uh, any IEM I plug into it, I'm not hearing any hiss, any noise from it. So that's a huge deal. Um, and so anyways, and that's true of both sides, um, but the AKM side admittedly probably measures a little bit better. Um, has one of the highest sign ads I've ever measured from any portable digital audio player uh, for whatever that's worth in case anybody cares about that. But, uh, but to me, the sound is right there with the SP2000. I haven't done a lot of 
real direct comparisons, but having spent the time with the 2000 and then now listening to the SE200, I feel it's in kind of a flagship class. If I was the SP2000, I probably wouldn't sleep very comfortably at night uh, uh, knowing that uh, this new sibling is in town. I'm not sure how you feel about that, but let's talk about that, availability and price. Yes, uh, so a C200 is going to be uh, available around the second week of July, start shipping to the customers. And uh, the retail price is going to be $17.99. Oh, okay, so about half about half of the flagship price. So, but, right. but it performs, again, as a flagship to me, and it has 14 hours of battery life, which is a big deal to me, which I'm going to talk about very shortly when we talk about the next player. So just briefly, you know, talk about the, uh, the compar comparison between the SE200 and the uh, SP2000. Um, yeah, I think uh, the main difference is that the SE200 is about a year late uh, coming, uh, coming into the market after SP2000 was launched last year around this time. So there's about an year gap of uh, development that we could put into and then technologies that we uh, took advantage of. So that has been the main uh, difference. And also still, when you hook it up with uh, bigger systems like loud systems or more sensitive home audio sy uh, systems, then you'll be able to tell different size of the soundstage or the depth uh, of the music performance between uh, the Ultima flagships versus uh, the Fultra lineups or the Norma SR uh, series. Yeah, I need to do more comparisons because we only had this really for a handful of days. You know, we just got it. This was a big surprise. And I definitely want to compare it more to the SP2000 because as of now, I would say uh, cost no object. For me, the SP2000 has probably been the best player currently available just in terms of sound alone, cost no object. It's been there. This may compare and it sounds to me like it's in that league. Um, I definitely want to do some more direct comparisons and direct measurement comparisons as well. But, uh, but yeah, it, to me, I consider this a, an AK flagship type player. Um, will it, will it, does it exceed the SP2000? That would take more direct comparisons. But, uh, but the fact that I can even talk about it in that vein, I think is, is, says a lot. So very excited about the SE200. Um, so that'll be available soon. There is a player I did want to talk about before we go, though that has been out for about a month. And this one has been a very big deal to me because, well, we talked about battery life, but there's more to it than that. But to me, that's kind of like a huge deal. And we're talking about this one here. This is the uh, A and Norma SR25, correct? That is correct. A so that? Yeah. this new player, SR25, uh, is the second model of the Norma family lineups. After the SR15, its predecessor, this SR25 comes with a couple of different uh, key improvements than the previous version. The main difference of SR25 is that uh, the first one is the battery life. The, it plays back the music 21 plus hours. Uh, you know, of course, it's really it varies by the um, based on the, how complex the music listening to or Wi-Fi streaming versus the internal memory and so on. But from the from our measurement, it's been consistently 21 plus hours of the playback of uh, music listening, and also uh, the other key feature uh, that SR25 supports is that since this is the device that we could offer a later version of operating system, now it is ready to go and start paired with the other LDAC compatible in-ear monitors or the headphones. Now, just to be clear, we're not really a big fan of a wireless music transfer yet, because uh, you know, wired connection gives you a lot more tonality, soundstage, and uh, other details uh, so far. But then SR25 uh, can offer LDEC for the sake of uh, convenience so that you can use it around by just walking the park or doing your uh, you know, gym exercises if you can ever go back to the gym. Then uh, with SR25 will be a perfect companion uh, for longer battery life and then uh, more options for the wireless pairing with other uh, in-ear monitors or the headphones. And SR25 is also uh, placed at the same retail price as SR15. The retail price of SR25 is $699 US dollars. 
And then the, the cases are sold separately at uh, $79. Yeah, this, um, this is, a, okay, uh, I'll say sound alone, so far, early comparisons, prefer the SE200 to the SR25. Uh, no huge surprise there, I guess. But I got to say, I, this is still in competitive with just about any player that I can think of, save for some of your top ones sonically. Still very quiet in terms of self-noise. Um, I think it has like a half microvolt more noise at listen, typical listening levels than, than the SE200. Um, but still uh, very quiet. It's the battery life, though, for me, that is a game changer because it's small. So it, it, it's a little bigger than the SR15, correct? I don't have that it handy. Is. So yeah, just a little bit. It's about the size of... It's about the size of... Uh, this. Okay, so that's... Yeah, that's you're showing the SE200 and the SR25. Uh, but the SR25 yeah, is a teeny bit bigger than the SR15 that it repla that, that, that it's, it replaces. Um but it's still small, and, um, and it offers 21 hours of battery life, which I think prior to this, any players I can think of that had that kind of battery life were significantly larger and heavier. But this fits in a pocket without pulling my pants down when I exercise, and, um, and it's an Astel and Kern. Still quiet with all my in-ears, and uh, still sounds great, but that, it's the battery life. So when we can get back to traveling, one of my biggest pains when I travel is having to make sure everything's charged every night. And the players usually I had to charge every single night because they had battery lives, typically more in the eight hour range in the past. Now we're getting up to something like 21 hours and I sometimes don't even have to charge this for, for days with typical use. That sure. to me is a big deal. And that it can do it in this size and lightweight is a big deal. So anyways, this to me, I wanted to make sure we mentioned that before we went today. And this has been available for about a month. It's it's quite affordable, actually. Uh, what was the retail again? The retail is six ninety nine. Yeah, so it's 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 quite affordable, um, and especially in the realm of um, AK players, Astel and Kern players, and um, and this is every bit an AK player. So, anyways, very excited about the SE two hundred. I think the market's going to respond very well to this one. And if you haven't looked at the SR twenty five, and battery life is as important to you as it is to me, um, you definitely want to look at the SR twenty five. But uh, Anyways, with that, Owen, oh, I, 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 I look forward to seeing you. I miss you, man. I haven't seen you in a long, long time. Um, I feel like it uh, uh, might be a little while still, so I, I really appreciate you coming by to talk today. No, uh, not at all. Thank you very much for having me, and then uh, hopefully we can see each other in person in other can gems pretty soon. I hope so, man. I hope so. Thanks a lot for coming by, Owen. Thanks for telling us about these new players. Thank you, Jude.